It's Dave at the allotment. Allotment Dave. Hello there, Dave's allotment. It's the 21st of April today. Things are looking uh, green. My rhubarbs flew up in the past couple of weeks. Big uh, picking that soon. I've took the took the ones off from inside the bin. I've had them. Uh, uh, they were quite uh, nice actually. Um, I've took the bin off now because all of the rest of them are catching up, so it's pointless having the bin on now. But uh, it's good to know for the next next year. Uh, nice to see a little bit of greenery starting. Now the tadpoles have all hatched. Tiny little, millions of tiny little tadpoles all over. And I'll have to give the uh, pond a little bit of a fill up. <coughs> well, what I'm today, what I'm going to do, because it's I cannot wait forever. But I've got some uh, wildflower seeds I'm going to plant around the pond and down there. Uh, I'm also going to put my broad beans in today and my onions they're going to go here broad beans there and the rest of the beans that I've got um, I don't think there'll be any sign of uh, beetroot yet it's a little bit cooler the day it has since it's been quite warm for the past uh, f past week or so, but it's not freezing cold, like, so everything should be alright. Bought at the uh, potatoes yesterday because uh, they were getting a bit dry. Uh, it's a bit cold today. I'll just uh, show you whoop, show you me apple tree. That's starting to bud. I'm glad about that. I thought I'd with us chopping it back that much I thought I had uh, killed it off but it's starting to grow back again there so that's canny there's cherry trees there uh, it's always early always get plenty of blossom on that straight away it's a bit later than it usually is like it, um, it was covered in blossom by this time last year but then the frost came and uh, killed all the blossom so at least we're getting the normal weather the comfrey as you can see how big it, it doubles in size I only made that video about the comfrey the other day and it's doubled up that's the cuttings that's what I put in it they'll shrivel away but they'll come back Let's show you what's going on inside the greenhouse like I say, I'm putting these broad beans out the day because they're big enough. Look at the roots on that, man. It's time for them to go out. And these cabbages, which I didn't plant on, they're massive now. The ones I did pot on are, are just as big. Uh, the broccoli that I planted last week is up. So I'm glad about that because them ones, well you can see they're starting to die off, went too leggy, John Wayne is big leggy, haha, <laughs> um, and the crunch, uh, chrysanthemums is doing the same thing, I've had my onions out of me, cold frame, My Rover 200, Rover 200 cold frame, and these are definitely growing. That, there was no in there that big on the last video. I put some more in there. 
and I'm glad that glad it actually works. Um, so I'll crack on. It's nearly time for the gardening program, so I'll get a cup on, and um, I've also got some beans to plant up. So I'm, I'll start making some newspaper rolls while I'm having my cup on, listening to the gardening program. Oh, the wind blew, blew me seat over. Luckily, it didn't, didn't hit any of the. Well, there's one pane of glass smashed, but that wasn't anything to do with this. It was the the lid off my compost bin. There's a beetroot growing in there. Look at that. So what happens? It put your stuff in there. All your all your seedlings that you didn't use they'll, they'll just end up growing in there uh, oh I've also the other day I don't know if it's in there now I'll, I'll be quiet inside my guitar I noticed a couple of blue tits so hopefully I'm gonna have a blue, blue tits nest in my, in my air guitar so uh, they must like blues music yeah so I'll crack on, I'll get my cuppa and I'll uh, start uh, getting the things ready to put in. Now I've just filling I've just opened this bag of compost here to uh, obviously put in me where I'm gonna put some beans. Unopened, I've just opened it now, and this is the first time that was inside it. I was 
I thought it was a, a stone at first a snail first time I've seen that so be careful if you uh, if you've got some compost there might be a snail inside it which are obviously going to love your seeds and everything so just a little warning there I'll crack on well, I'm just sitting finishing my cup of off um, and he's in a chair but that's not our favourite chair this is our favourite chair come on then. come here Holly. come on jump up here Annie's favourite chair. Mm -hmm. Is it your favourite chair again? sit there all day wouldn't you unfortunately come on jump down go on on your chair again jump on your chair on your chair good girl should stay there all day if she could right I've come in the greenhouse because it's showers it's a bit rainy outside down there so I've got some tomato plants which need to go into bigger pots As you can see they've gone a bit leggy so what I do is I'll, I'll plant it up to the first set of the first set of seed leaves and then it'll be fine so dig the soil out a little bit so I can get it deep Like I say, you want it up to this. It'll not hurt the plant if you stick it up to the first set of leaves, like. See, so they've got nice roots on there. Blackbird nearly flew into the greenhouse. So I'll just plunk it in. Same as everything else, don't touch the try not to touch the stem. Just like that. So that's planted into there, and eventually, when they get big enough, I'll plant them into the ground, into the pots. Now oh, that's called a uh, ring culture. You can do the same with a, um, a grow bag. Just like a, cut a ho two holes in your grow bag, stick your air. Uh, stick the bucket in. Now the reason for doing this is because the tomato it's got two sets of roots. One root is the tap root which will search for the water and the, um, they'll go down into this bit in the top part where all of the feeding roots are stay at the top of the plant. So the idea is your water into here just normal water into the bed and put your feed into the pots so when it gets obviously big arts going to get planted up into there feed into there water into the ground 
that's the way I've done it. I usually do it in grow bags, but since I've got the cow manure this year, I'm going to do it straight into the ground. And them onions I put up, put in last week, um, they've started growing already. Speaking of onions, I need to get them ones out, so now the rain's stopped, I'll crack on with that. Well, it looks like someone hasn't put the fleece down properly. Now we have to take that off because it's uh, spoiling the blackberries. It's not my fleece, it's that I put mine down properly. <laughs> right, it's time to put my onions in. Um, so what, I've, what I do, as you can see there, I brought the tray out and you just scoop the from the bottom, lift up and then separate your onions there's one there you can see see it's got good root on and a good uh, good start so what I do is it started raining again so I'll just quickly show you how to how I do it and then I'll, I'll turn it off crack on and start filming again when it's all when they're all in so what I've done is put a uh, handful of cow manure in the bottom of there where I'm going to put the onion and I just put it in I kind of do this with one hand so you get the idea stick it in put your soil back and that's it now I, I usually the general rule when it comes to planting onions is make sure you plant them far enough apart so when they're fully grown you can get your hoe in between the rows that's the, that's the best way to do it so it's I've planted they're about they'll be about six inches apart it depends on how big you actually want your onions to grow um, this is one that I grew last year and that's how big I like them, you know, a good table table onion. I don't grow any for sure or anything like that, but planting them that far apart will give you an onion that big. And like you, as you can see, you can get the get the hoe in between. You've got to think ahead. It's a it's quite scientific but I'll tell you later okay I'm back um, I've done everything that I needed to do for the day it's keep on raining I think it's I'm gonna get another downpour here shortly so I'll just quickly give you a run through of what I've done um, me this is me garlic I'm quite pleased it's starting to actually um, thicken up now now what I've been uh, watering this is um, watering this with is the water from where I put the cow manure in the in the water in the water tank so I think that works and these flowers are here uh, coming up and all spreading now I think I think these are bluebells, but the the leaves look a little bit too thick. I know for I know that definitely these ones, these are bluebells, and the leaves are much thinner than them ones. So I don't know. I'd be a surprise to find out what they are. Anyway, crack on. These strawberries are still there, uh, still growing. Like I said before, the beetroot. There's no sign, but I'm not sure. I don't know what that is. Uh, like, like when the broad beans are out, there's two different varieties here. The um, aqua, aqua dulce, and these ones are Sutton Dwarf variety. I usually plant these 
like I would have showed you how I, I planted them but it was it's been raining so I didn't want to get the camera wet but I've given them a water in um, like I say these ones will grow to about uh, they usually get to about six foot tall and these ones they're about four foot and what I'll do is um, later on when they get a bit taller I'll put some uh, posts in so I can put a little bit of fleece just to protect them because they uh, black fly they love the they love them but if you put a bit of protection up two foot it keeps away keeps them away the, the black fly and carrot fly as well um me walk me onions are in as you can see I space them in like that and the the end up that big I, p I usually put about 60 in so it, I, I try and get an like an onion per week you know that's how I try and work it and the the eight spare ones are, are for ones that are because most like not most of them but some of them get the white rot and you cannot help that um, the pound shot viruses coming up them ones under there are still there growing nice comfy just whipping through this bit now here so this is a leak which um, I've left in it's dead because it, once the leaks grew it's that's it it won't come back but you think it some some might think it's still grown but all it's doing is producing a seed head that's it and I don't know if you can see but there's a couple of uh, leaks growing there from the bottom so what I actually could do is pull that off now pull that off I'll leave that in there that's it there's an experiment that leak is staying in in fact uh, hey I'll tell you what it is this is a uh, I've, I've just noticed this them leaks are massive all coming from the stem so it's a good idea to maybe just leave a couple of your leaks in the ground over the winter and then look at well look at the size of them leaks there getting three growing out of there so hey that's a uh, you learn something new every day these uh, strawberries I still need to get them out of here because this is I want to put my carrots in here shortly um, like I say the the comfrey grows like wildfire which is good that's what you want get it chopped down I've left me the uh, I've left me other other onions in there because the rain was getting a bit too heavy so they'll go in there another time I've been uh, a little bit busy in here now I don't know if you can remember um, about a month ago I planted some sweet corn which I, I didn't think was working so I just left it I didn't even water it or anything it was just left in the middle of the on the side of the greenhouse and that was it and the other day I come and look at they're coming up I'm amazed so I've brought them back there back into this greenhouse it's a little bit warmer and I've also sowed sowed 10 more um, seeds and this this is another one my sunflower which I thought wasn't going to come to anything actually did grow but as you can see the slugs getting it so unfortunately I've had to put some slug pellets down because I'm not uh, having that the frogs are, aren't obviously lively enough yet um, the chrysanthemum cottons they're perking up that's uh, looking nice and healthy 
um, the cabbages that I potted on oh, all right there's the later I sort of broad beans they're all up so I'll get them in in the next couple of weeks like I say the broccoli that I put in last week has just started coming up um, now these are the two tomato plants they're called um, oh, I can't think at the minute um, the cherry tomatoes, so I've just brought them in here because it's a little bit warm I, just, I don't want them to uh, get cold you know and uh, well I'll, what else I've been doing today is and I would like to take this time to thank Simon for sending us the seeds I have planted the Bellotti seeds in today thank you very much I've never tried them before so it'll be interesting to see what happens um, the peas I'll be putting them in in a couple of weeks it's still a bit too cold up here for that like but thank you very much um, like I say when the chrysanthemum cuttings get a good little root on them there'll be some coming your way um, oh these uh, these tomatoes these are tumbling tigers so I've got a hanging basket I'm going to put them in and you don't even have to take the suckers off them or anything you, they just bush and hang over the side of the hanging basket first time I've tried them as well so hopefully that'll be uh, interesting that's um, that's the uh, hanging basket I'm going to put it in well worn in and I've got another one I'll put two in there but like I say these uh, the strawberries are loving it in that, that bottle thing like and the soil inside is really like really warm so that definitely does work um, the other greenhouse uh, before I showed you the onions and that and that that's the way I put me um, tomatoes in but uh, I showed you that before so I'll go through that again me uh, grapevine has just started breaking so that's good Aye, the buds are just starting to break um, what else have I been doing oh this stuff here is uh, potash it's just all of the wood like but, um, the stuff I've burned it, it turns into that and it's at that ideal potash so I'll be sprinkling that on the tomatoes later on when the obviously when they grow the winds took out quite a few of the panels on oh, here's a little tip for you don't buy Wilkinson's um, gaffer tape because it's absolutely hopeless and uh, I've put some of them wildflower seeds down there I didn't bother showing you how to do that it's obvious it's uh, straightforward it does what it says on the packet shake and rake that's what you do haha <laughs> it's easy um, I've got all of this fleece off what a, a nightmare it's I kind of get this bit off I was getting I suppose that I, I should wear gloves for that like but I, tr um, I try not to wear gloves because especially when handling seedlings and stuff because you you've got to be able to feel what you're doing but like I say that's a that's a good warning to people make sure you put your fleece down and make sure it goes down and, and stays on the ground otherwise it ends up in other people's um, blackberry bushes and uh, they end up having a right nightmare trying to get them so take warning whoever's fleece that is <laughs> um, that's about it for the day like it's now half past six. Oh, yeah, I bought myself. I got a little friend there from the pound shop. Some people don't like um, gnomes, like, but I think they're all right. 
I don't know if you've noticed these around the garden before I this is another thing I used to do carve things out of um, breeze blocks and well the reason I stopped making them is I thought I, I carved this it's 12 years old now so is that and I thought with them being breeze blocks that they wouldn't you know they they not weather very well but they, they have there's a little bit damage to them like but that's that was going to be Yoda but it started getting a bit difficult so it, it's just the gargoyle of the allotment now and that's the cat quite quite easy to carve actually like like um, I don't know if you can see it it did used to have a face on I was thinking maybe it's a little bit uh, lacquer stuff you know to fix fix paintings and that that might keep them a bit more um, it might stop them from rotten rotting away anyway I'm going on a drift now no sign of the blue tit but there have been about up I think there's a couple nesting in that holly tree up there because all afternoon they've been singing away at each other but the clouds are coming in so I think it's going to rain thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and um, happy gardening everybody spring has finally sprung see yous